Almighty God did it again. You woke up on the right side of the dirt. So let's give God a praise. This is John Lakin and Friends. What's up, everybody? This is your boy, John Lakin, and welcome to John Lakin and Friends. Welcome to John Lakin and Friends. We're so excited that you decided to worship with us on today. We have an incredible show lined up for you. We're about to lift a praise that says, thank you for your amazing grace. Shout hallelujah. My God, hallelujah. 
Hi, I'm Pastor Chanel Kalu. And I'm Pastor Kalu Kalu. And we just want to talk about the marriage, the godly marriage. And keeping God center of your marriage is very important because He is the glue that holds you together. And the Word lets us know that we should, as men, we should love our wives unconditionally. So you have to make sure that you are pouring into them even when you don't feel like it, even when things aren't going well, even when bad things happen, that you're loving them all the time. And that also for women, that they should honor their husbands at all times. So it's great to have a godly marriage and have God in the middle of everything. And to honor your husband, I know the word submit, ooh, we don't like that word. But submit is not a curse word. Submit is sometimes seen as an ugly word. But being able to submit to one another means that God is there. Your husband is always the head of your household. And you are the one that has the power behind him, that stands beside him to help lead and guide the family. But with God together, he speaks through the both of you all, that you will have a God kind of marriage, a God-fearing marriage. You know, they have those things called hashtag couple goals, but you want to be a hashtag godly couple. And if you are a king and you want your queen to follow you, you have to have kingdom mentality. You have to make sure that you're providing a trustworthy atmosphere for your wife to want to follow you, that you're making good decisions, that you're loving her unconditionally and doing great things. And if you're doing those things, everything will work themselves out. All things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. God has created and designed marriage for you to enjoy. Your marriage won't look like your parents, your marriage won't look like your pastors, but it will look like the marriage that God has intended for you as individuals who have come together to live it out loud. So you do what is best and what works well in your marriage through the help of the Holy Spirit. Love one another, enjoy every moment that you have together. Take lots of pictures and videos. Make sure to acknowledge one another. Tell each other you love them. Give them a peck, give them a hug, do whatever you have to do Make your marriage fun and loving. Be patient, be, be kind, take time to spend time with your family, and make sure that you're doing things in decency and in order. This, this is, is your, your motivational, motivational moment, moment with, with John, John Lakin, Lakin and, and friends. friends. Welcome back to John Lakin and Friends. We are super excited to have a real friend and brother of our show here with us on today. He is the senior pastor of the Rehoboth Baptist Church, as well as the representative for District 79 here in the state of South Carolina. My good friend and brother, Dr. Ivory Thigpen. How are you, sir? Pleasure is mine. Glad to be here. Man, we're so glad to have you here on the show. Uh, first off, I got to start by shouting out my favorite guidance counselor. Okay. And my homegirl, Miss Jones, you know, she reached out to me about the incredible things that you're doing at Rehoboth. Let's talk about this incredible celebration that you all recently celebrated here in Columbia, South Carolina at Rehoboth. I think uh, when we talk about churches and ministry and effectiveness in ministry and longevity of ministry, uh, it is to be celebrated as we did oh, 145 yes. years of being in ministry. Wow. Can you imagine 145 years ago, they decided to come together for the purpose of worshiping, ha creating an establishment. And you know, we see churches that come up all the time, right. but you don't know the longevity of that impact. And for them to uh, to come all of these years and now to have a young man like yourself, uh, not just a pastor, but also uh, a professional doctor as it relates to being an incredible chiropractor and a representative carrying forth the vision of the Lord. Uh, so my question to you is, uh, how do you um how do you carry the weight of all that has come from this house in this current season going forward? I think that's a great question, and I think you've already alluded to the answer, and that is I remember or think about, contemplate the sacrifices that were made by uh -huh. all those who came before myself. You know, I don't want to take credit for what is done. Yeah. Uh, I'm blessed to serve a wonderful group of people, and I believe a blessed community. Mm -hmm. And because of that, um, it makes me think to, like you said, 145 years ago, the resources that they had or the lack thereof. Wow. But beyond that, what they had substantively or concrete, what they had in spirit and intention and engagement, you know, that the spirit of the Lord moved through them and allowed them to imagine beyond their current set of circumstances. Yes, I don't think they could have foreseen where we are now. Wow. Right. But think about our world 145 years ago. Yeah. You know, coming through racism, coming through uh, the social injustices that they had to live through. Like you said, having meager means 
and still forging ahead to do the Lord's work. Right. And if you allow me to tie the, the things together, um, you know, not it. 145 years ago, being able to own businesses that allowed all persons to have access and opportunity to be treated as I am a business owner, as the church itself has a child care development center and meets the needs and has a business apparatus associated with it. Wow. Not only that, but not even having the ability to vote. And here it is now. I serve as a representative who was elected by individuals 145 years ago. That was unimaginable. Come on. We, we, and we've heard it said, and some may believe it to be cliche, but I believe it to be apropos. Uh, we are our ancestors wild the streams. Mm, I love it. I love it. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. Now, where are you from? I hail from the great state of Jackson, Mississippi. Humpback, right. humpback, I, crooked letter, crooked letter, I, crooked letter, <laughs> crooked letter, I, All right, back, now. I hear back, you now. I hear I. you. That's how we learn how to spell it. Right, right. Man, Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah. And so... Uh, I want to, let's deal with uh, the pastor, the okay. ministry, sure. the minister. Uh, sure. When did you first feel or sense the call of God concerning huh. uh, your life? Because like I said, with you having so many facets to your world, right. hearing God in that space had to be a little difficult. Yeah, you know, I believe just in general, you know, the more we do not compartmentalize God, mm the more we operate in the abundance of God's yeah. blessing. So, you know, I, I think it dates all the way back to my acceptance of Christ into my heart at the tender age of five. Wow. You know, um, I'm blessed to be um, baptized and raised in New Hope Baptist Church, uh, which is in Jackson, Mississippi, who's pastored by uh, the Reverend Dr. Jerry Young, who is the president of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. Wow. Um, and, you know, I was not only uh, under great tutelage by his leadership, um, there were a lot of programs and things that I had access and opportunity to participate in and with that I believe tremendously shaped me. For instance, this is just one example. You know, we have a child care development center at um, Rehoboth Baptist Church. Uh, yes, sir. New Hope Baptist Church. Uh, I was part of the inaugural class of their wow. child care development center which I think ingrained in me a deep passion that church is to do more than religiously educate, but that we okay. are to meet the needs of the people to save lives, therefore that we can save souls. And so um, I had the opportunity and have been a champion even here because of what I was exposed to then. So sitting on the front row in Come devotion, on. you know, I remember like it was yesterday, you know, asking the Lord into my heart. And I think that also allowed me, because I know some are particular about the age as Baptists, yeah, in I which individuals can truly know Except and Christ. Yeah. be baptized by fire before water. Come on. Um, I know for a fact, and remember mm. clearly and vividly, you know, that moment in my own life, which allows me to be sensitive to, you know, the Lord can move on any heart at any Come age. Because I can remember at various ages, 8, 10, 11, definitely into my late teens, my pastor saying things that stuck with me that I would never forget and later were a part of very impactful decisions I made as a pastor. Wow. Give you one for an example. I probably had to be about 14. Uh, but our choir director, I know you may appreciate this, yes, um, who's now a pastor, and that's going to be an important point of the story shortly. Uh, he worked uh, in his nine to five as one of the financial officers of the school district. Okay. Well, he was indicted and accused oh of embezzling money, and it was all the talk of the town and I'm definitely sure. the church. That's how it goes. And um, I remember my pastor standing and saying, you know, I stand now not in defense of him. Mm because I do not have all the facts, and mm. it is not my responsibility to seek out all the facts. Come on. But what I can definitively state, whether wrong or right, mm. good or bad, he's ours. Wow. Now, that's wisdom. And he said, we must stand with him, for that's what solidarity means. Now, I, I was a teenager, barely. Uh, at the time, I'm sure I didn't even know what solidarity meant. Wow. Come on. Uh, Come on. But he later became a pastor and affected wow. and still is pastoring to this day. Mm. And so I wonder what would have been his trajectory or his path if we had, you know, uh, discarded him or mm. rejected him or not stood with him in that moment. He later was exonerated. The charges wow. were false, but you know. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. How, but you know, I, I tell was just people, about to go the to. apology is never as loud as the accusation. It's never as loud. And, and contrary to popular opinion and belief and statement, 
We are not sometimes in this America that we live in, innocent until proven guilty. Talk about it. We're tarnished until we're proven innocent and then still never fully forgiven. And discarded. Yeah. And so as I became a pastor and was presented with similar situation, I had the wherewithal and mm. the point of reference Come to on. say, you know what? I remember Jesus. not only the situation and what took place and how he was later found innocent, mm -hmm. which is less of an impactful point to me than the fact that he later became a pastor. Mm. And I believe that his pastoral plight was directly Connect, impacted and connected to our ability to loving him as God loves him. Now, now talk to somebody, somebody out there uh, who may even be guilty of the accusation. May be guilty. A lot of people, uh, when, it, when it comes to accepting Jesus Christ, the first thing you're saying is, I'm guilty of what I have done. That I've is said, the first step, yes. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, you can't just think that, uh, well, I don't lived a good life, I'm a good person, and that that is not a necessary step, you know? So for those that may have had missteps and mistakes in their lives, what would you say to them right now to let them know well, that I, God is covering them just yeah, like the yeah, pastor? Yeah, 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 I, I say a couple of things. One from a more, uh, you know, biblical perspective and the other one from a more worldly perspective, but I think both are applicable. Yes, sir. From a biblical perspective, the, the, the scenery that comes to my mind is a woman who was caught in adultery. Let he or she, let whomever mm. who is without sin mm. cast the first stone. So uh, none of us have clean hands. Come on, talk about and it. And so the fact is that, to your point, repentance begin with mm. an admission yes. of guilt. Mm. All have fallen short of the glory of God. Yes. So I think that's what we have to begin with from a biblical standpoint. Mm. But from a worldly but yet still godly perspective, you know, there's a, there's a saying that I'm not particularly fond of. Okay. Uh, I'm with you when you're right. Well, oh. anybody is with me with my right. Yeah. My enemy sometimes is, is with me when, when I'm, I'm right. right. But the question is, who can be with mm. me when I'm wrong? Who can lead me back to right or even better, righteousness? Mm. And so, you know, we must stand with, because I believe that's what God does. You know, God yes. came into the garden. Don't get me. I got you. you know, I love I, it. Go I'll ahead. Catch my preacher's Go voice ahead. up in here. Go ahead. Uh, you know, God, you know, uh, talk about it. You know, descending into the garden. And, mm. you know, it, it was about being with Adam, even though, being with Eve, even though they failed, even though they were wrong, and being committed to restoring them and directing them back to right relationship.
God everywhere I go. I don't have a switch where I turn it on and turn it off. My God. Last time, say, say I'm so in love. I'm so in love. We have one famous question that we have on this show. Okay. That we ask every guest. All right. And uh, I don't know if you carry a tune or not, but we asked him to to answer in song. Okay, wow. Okay. Uh, the famous question Holy Spirit, is, do we? what is your favorite hymn? Oh, that's good. That's a good one. I have so many. Uh, oh. That's a good one. You know, and, and believe it or not, I've never been asked this question. What? I'm, are, now, are you one of the pastors that 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 touches that touches the song right before he comes? I, I have the, grown I, I, I to have. a place where I do frequently sing in okay. my sermons. Now, okay. was not all the case. I've never been musically trained, but let me tell you a little bit you. about my family in answering this question. I love it. Okay. So I am from Jackson, Mississippi, the capital city of Jackson, and I went to Jackson State University in okay. Jackson, Mississippi. If you say that your name is Big Ben, uh -huh. there is an automatic uh, belief that you can sing. Something. That you can sing. Because I got a friend from uh, Mississippi. Right. So Dathan Thickpin. Dathan who, is my good friend. So Dathan is my cousin. Cut it out. Yeah, no doubt. And his brother, the director. We went, we, yeah, Dorcas Thickpin, yeah. director of Mississippi Mass Choir. Mississippi so, Mass Choir. So his oldest brother and I, we're the same age. All of us went to school Wonderful. together. Donovan and I, then Dominic is next under, then Dathan's after us. So we all went yes. to high school and college together, and I played football. They were in the band. Okay. Uh, now, but, people who don't know who Dathan Thickpin is, Dathan was Sunday's best winner. Yeah, the celebrity I, yes. version of Sunday's Big. Yes. I mean, the winner's Actually, version. The, of, yeah, the, the uh, collaboration yeah. where all of the, uh, previous, winners all of the came previous winners came together. Yeah. Very true, very yeah, true. Yeah. So so when most people say Thick Pin, they be like, oh, you can I sing. You, uh -huh. and, and his father taught most people in this, uh, well, can't say most, a large percentage of the people how to play piano. So okay. They just expect you to be musically inclined and you. can sing. So I, I, I quickly say, well, I'm not that Thick <laughs> Pin. Uh, but I guess it would be Pass me not, oh gentle Savior. Yes, sir. Oh, hear my humble cry. I hear you now. Yes, sir. While on others thou art called. Come on now. Calling. Oh, do not pass. Me. Bye. All right, Rev. I hear you now. See, you made me do something most people I can't make not. me do. Oh, I am no, glad we, that you did. I, I tell people this, and I think this will give a uh, great context to the previous attempt at singing. You know, um, I'm a worshiper. I hear you now. And and, and when I worship, come on, uh, I'm liable to hoop. I love it. I'm liable to shout. Yes, I'm sir. liable to sing. I'm liable to dance. Yeah. Uh, for when the Spirit of the Lord gets 